Hey everybody, Jake here with Jake Wu Market Research to go over a broad overview of the markets going into the last full trading week of October. Before I jump in, I did want to mention that I am going to be going over futures, ESNQCL, that's just the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and then crude, Bitcoin, and then NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, and AMD. These are all just going to be the weekly candle charts. If you want more details, I did a full write-up on the daily and weekly charts in the Twitter subscription that I have. It's $10 a month, and it, uh, I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out if you'd like. So uh, before we get started, I did want to mention for anybody that's trading futures, if you do want to check out Optimist Futures, they are somebody who I've partnered with and uh, they are a futures brokerage. So if you want to check them out, uh, check out the link in the description below as well. And uh, let's jump right into it. So we'll start with ES. Really, the biggest thing here is that we broke below the March pivot VWAP zone this week. So that is definitely a status quo changer in the market. You can see here that we did uh, close below the bottom of the zone here. So you can see here we got the actual VWAP around 30, excuse me, 4309.50. And the bottom of that VWAP zone was right around 4277. So we closed below that. And now we're entering into this large volume gap below. So uh, when you do enter these areas of extreme kind of low liquidity in the market, you can move very quickly through these areas. So this volume gap definitely could act as a vacuum for price. Uh, moving it all the way down to this next area of liquidity, this huge volume shelf below, ranging from around 41.10 all the way up to around 41.85. So this area is also right in line with the October 2022 pivot VWAP zone, and that is definitely a confluent zone that we could potentially move down to and possibly find some support. So we'll see how that goes into the week ahead. Going into NQ, you can see here that a pretty simple chart. You don't really have to make things complicated. They don't need to be. The main thing here is that we rejected off of this diagonal trend zone over the last two weeks. Really, really ugly candle moving down into, uh, into next week, but we are still above the March pivot VWAP zone, which has acted as support back here in April. So you can see here pretty much we kind of just grinded along this area before we really took off back in May. So this area has been an area of support below in the past. So if that is the case, again, that ranges from around 14,465 14, 14, all the way up to around 14,620. So that range below is definitely what you want to keep an eye on for a weekly close above that area. If we do get a weekly close below this VWAP zone, that's when things could definitely get pretty interesting uh, and, and potentially a bigger kind of waterfall scenario. But for now, we're really just pulling back and mean reverting to this March pivot VWAP zone. And until we break down, uh, that's kind of the status quo here that we have in the market. And, uh, you know, we could just continue to chop around like we have over the last several months. Oil is definitely one that is not doing anything for the market uh, as far as uh, bullishness goes. Anytime you have high oil prices, you definitely, uh, you know, think about potentially more inflation coming. So that is why that the market does not want to see high oil right now. But you can see here that we pulled back. Uh, and then as the war started back up in the Middle East over the last couple of weeks, we did get a bounce off of this June 2022 high pivot VWAP here. So uh, for now, we're just kind of trading in this range between this VWAP zone, this pivot VWAP zone, all the way down to around 81 I'd say just around 81. Uh, you can make a range anywhere from around 81 to 81.25. The top of this range, and this is the actual VWAP, is right around 83.22. So until we break above really the top of this SR flip zone at 95.75 or below the bottom of this VWAP zone at 81 to 81.25, we we're really just kind of trading in this, uh, this range here. And, um, you know, the question is how much of this Middle East volatility has been priced into the oil market. Are we going to have some crazy event that drives oil higher? That's something that I don't think anyone knows. So we, we just have to kind of see how things play out in the Middle East. And that's really going to affect oil going into the next uh, several weeks or longer. The one interesting thing here, this is probably the most interesting thing that I'm seeing in the markets right now is this decoupling of Bitcoin and the overall markets. So if you look at the overall markets, as we just did, big red candles to the downside, 
But Bitcoin is moving higher and uh, really launching off of this volume shelf. So I essentially anchored the volume profile from the November 2022 low. And we're just seeing where has volume occurred at these different price levels since that pivot and that low in November. So you can see here that we had a ton of volume here that actually acted as short term resistance over the last three weeks. And then this week we uh, we finally just blasted through it and kind of this essentially can act as a launch pad for price, which it has. So for now, we've got this ascending triangle forming here. And really, the interesting thing is the last time that we really saw Bitcoin decouple from the markets like this, where Bitcoin just got this huge impulse candle up and the markets are getting hit pretty hard, was when we had some issues back in uh, March with uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And so, you know, with interest rates the way they are in the in the 10 year continuing to move up, you know, is this potentially a time where we're going to have another uh, Silicon Valley type issue arise in the markets? We'll see, but definitely the fact that Bitcoin is moving up like it is uh, with the markets moving down is something to consider because generally moves with the market. So it's a great risk on risk off indicator. But for now, it's it's really moving opposite with the markets. And even while this uh, video is going on, we're just absolutely ripping right now into the top of this ascending triangle resistance zone, pretty much from around 30,000. 325 all the way up to the previous highs that we saw in July, uh, all the way up to around 31,700. So that is definitely a range around 30,350 all the way up to around 31,700. So until we break above that area, you know, we're, we're just really retesting this resistance zone that we've tested back in April and then in June and July but definitely something to keep an eye on and, and possibly crypto names moving uh, from this into the coming weeks. All right, NVIDIA, we'll quickly go over a couple names here, just uh, individual names uh, in the market. NVIDIA, definitely an ugly candle this week. You can see here that we've got this huge volume gap below. So there's an pretty much what we we're looking at on ES. There's just not a ton of liquidity down here and we have a huge price gap below as well so from the previous earnings. So this area is definitely going to be very interesting, especially as we start to break down and close below the breakout VWAP zone. So one of the main ways to use the anchored VWAP is anchoring from these breakout points, these status quo changes in the market. And you can see here that we finally closed below this VWAP zone. That's the first time that we've had this close below on the weekly candle since we broke out in May. So you know, this is this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, really, if we break below the psychological level of 400, things are going to get very interesting here where you have uh, quite a few gaps below. Uh, those are highlighted in the Twitter subscription, all the, the key levels and all of that. Uh, so if you do want to check that out in more detail other than just this weekly chart, uh, those details are in the subscription. So all in all, head and shoulders also forming here. You know, the neckline is right around 400. So uh, this could definitely get ugly if we see continued weakness in the markets, especially with a big earnings week coming up and just earnings season in general. You can definitely have some crazy volatility in the markets. Speaking of that, Tesla is a great example. So Tesla had a symmetrical triangle here that I think everybody on Twitter and the financial world, world were looking at. We did break down actually before earnings. So the weekly candle was already breaking down below the symmetrical triangle support zone. And then we just absolutely water, waterfalled after that. And what's interesting is, once again, you have this huge volume gap. So this area where you just don't have a lot of liquidity. So, uh, you know, I don't use the volume profile all the time because sometimes it's just not relevant. You can use VWAPs instead, but this is really the time when the anchored volume profile is extremely helpful, especially identifying these areas, these volume gaps where price can move very quickly to the downside. So that's what happened. We just kind of vacuumed down to the previous lows that we saw in August. And then uh, really the previous highs that we saw back in early 2023. So pretty much this previous resistance has flipped to potential support. It flipped to support in August to be determined here uh, for, for uh, this current period in October. But you can see here that we do have this confluence area of the January uh, 23 reversal and the, the January 23 reversal VWAP that is right at 208.46. And that's right in line with this previous resistance flip to support. So uh, that is definitely something that you want to keep an eye on. Pretty much a break and close below 
the uh, January 23 reversal VWAP at 208.46 could definitely bring us to the bottom of that VWAP zone, which is sub 200. So uh, that is something to definitely keep in mind. And once again, I did uh, further analysis and more detailed analysis in the Twitter subscription uh, written analysis that is for this name on the daily candle as well. So big week next week to see if we can hold this uh, confluent zone of the VWAP and the SR flip zone here. And uh, that is what we have going on for Tesla into next week. Apple is another one that, you know, has had trouble at this diagonal resistance zone, kind of looking like the Qs. You can see here that we also have this, this huge area of volume here, this volume shelf. And you do have this volume gap below. So pretty much uh, down below the VWAP zone here from the January 23 reversal, you can see here pretty much this could act as a, a vacuum for price as well, all the way down to the mid 160s. So definitely keep an eye on that, especially if we break down below 170, I'd say below 171 on the weekly chart. You know, we could definitely move quickly down to the 165 area. And then that would be that would be pretty bad if we closed below that on the weekly chart, because you can see here that the January 23 reversal VWAP, the actual VWAP, uh, the other, this is uh, just an offset here. So I use percent offsets all the time to capture price action that did not get all the way down to the VWAP. So notice here where, where this red circle is. These are times where price did not actually test the VWAP. It got pretty close here in March or excuse me, February of 2023, but it never tested and touched the actual VWAP. So I like to create these zones to create more or less margin of error around these VWAPs because sometimes VWAPs just aren't tested. Here's a great example of that back in September where we moved down, but we missed the VWAP by, you know, give or take a, a dollar or two. So you can see here that, you know, these zones definitely can help you give yourself more of an area of interest rather than an exact price level to the cent. That is definitely what to watch for next, going into next week for Apple. Um, this volume gap, definitely something to consider below 171.75 and then the VWAP all the way down to 167.68. That's what the current VWAP is. Obviously, as price action and volume evolve, that will change and the price of the VWAP will also change. Last one is NVIDIA. This one is really kind of hard to do anything with right now because it's simply just in this VWAP pinch. So a VWAP pinch is essentially when you have two VWAP zones that are kind of starting to merge together and create a very tight channel. And really until you can break above or below the VWAP zone, it's a pretty neutral setup. There's no like, this is definitely bullish or this is definitely bearish. The directional break is what really identifies the, the next move. So if we get a weekly close above the top of this May 23 pivot VWAP zone around 14, excuse me, 114.50, or below the bottom of the January 23 pivot VWAP zone, currently right around 96, you know, this is pretty range bound. One thing that I would mention is you do have a potential inverse head and shoulders forming here. So you can see here, here's your right shoulder, excuse me, left shoulder, here's the head, and then here's your potential right shoulder here. So right shoulder could probably go all the way down to right around 100 before uh, invalidating any lower than that. So the left shoulder goes all the way down to 99.70, uh, right around 99.50. So if we get a move down to 99.50 and hold that area, that is pretty much your threshold for the, the right shoulder here. If we go any much lower than that, it's, uh, it's going to invalidate the potential uh, inverse head and shoulders. So definitely keep an eye on that price level. But in general, unless you're a range trader just trading the range of this, of this pinch, which is completely... Uh, something you could have done over the last three, four weeks. You know, if you're more of a directional market participant, want to catch the trend, this is just really not trending right now. It's just range bound. And you can see that from this VWAP inch pretty much flattening out. So that is all I have. Hopefully this video was helpful getting an idea of what the markets look like into the week ahead, as well as, you know, how I use some of these different tools on my chart. Remember the partnership with Optimus Futures. If you want to check them out, go to the description, video description and click on that link. Uh, and for the Twitter subscription, as I mentioned, I did daily and weekly written analysis on that. So if you want a deeper dive into some of these names and more names, definitely give that subscription a try. It's only $10 for the whole month and the link is in the description as well. 
everybody have a great week and uh, we'll see you in the next video.